All right, what is going on, guys? Uh, coming at you with a breakdown for uh, Fitness of the Coast 24.2. Um, before we get into that, um, I just wanted to throw out some reminders for people. Um, after week one, the leaderboard is always weird. It's always going to have you know, that one athlete specialist type way up on the leaderboard. We're coming into week two and three. We have completely different workouts now. So we have um, a sub five minute workout. We had a 20 minute workout last week and we got heavier weights on the bar. So as these weeks go on, the leaderboard's gonna shake up. Don't put all your stock into one performance. The other thing to keep in mind is that there's a lot more people signed up this year. I think there's like 45 more um, pro elite females signed up. I didn't get the numbers on the guys. So uh, if you're trying to compare placings to last year or what, or, you know, trying to figure out what the average spot is going to be, anytime we have more people signing up, that average placement to get into the competition typically goes up. So if last year's placement to get into the competition was I don't, like uh, average placing of 63, let's just say, for um, to get a spot. It's going to go up now because there's more people putting their name into the hat and into the ringer. So don't put a lot of stock into your first week's placement. Um, even for people who did well in that one, there's going to be weakness workouts that come out. Your job is just to focus on doing the best you can each and every week and then let the chips fall where they may. I tell a lot of my athletes to just get off the leaderboard during these things. Um, it brings more harm than good and brings more negative thoughts than positive thoughts. And during this time, we want as many positive thoughts pushing our performance as possible. So sorry about that two minute rant. <laughs> We're going to get into the workout now. Um, so first one is 12, 10, 8, 6, 4, 2. Front squats, lateral burpees over the bar. Uh, if you haven't yet, you can check out Fittest of the Coast. Uh, they had four athletes doing the workouts. I'm assuming they're all from different divisions. Um, I don't know if anyone really looked like they were in the RX Pro division. I think it was two intermediate people um, and then two uh, maybe masters and the scaled individual. Uh, so I think the one girl finished at I couldn't see the clock exactly and the stream started a little late so you couldn't get a stopwatch on it, but I think it was right around the four minute mark um, and not great score. She put in some good effort there. Um, I think they'll come back and retest it though. It definitely looked like they were not like dying on the ground as you should be after this one. Um, but uh, this is a very short workout and I think, I don't know, but estimating top times are gonna be somewhere in that 250 like sub three minute range. So just throwing out some ideas right now. We'll obviously get more data on this and um, if you guys need, you can ask and see if we've updated this at all. But I think pro is gonna be somewhere in between 250 and 315 for a top time. You're more than likely gonna be need to be closer to that three minute range though. I think if you're gonna have a qualifying score for the uh, pro division or elite division, RX is gonna be somewhere in that 315, 330 range. Again, the closer you can be to that 315 number, the better you're gonna be. And then intermediate, somewhere in that 334 range would be our estimates right now. Um, I didn't look to see if the weights were different on, or what, what your divisions are, uh, but as the weights decrease, the workout time domain generally stays the same. Um, the only thing that you're factoring in at that point in time is more so the burpees than anything else. So typically, professional higher divisions have faster burpees than the lower divisions. So that's kind of where those numbers come in. And then RX is obviously capacity based. Um, so for this workout, kind of two strategies that we're looking at. If you are a high level athlete, a good competitor, have great squat endurance, good quad endurance, you should probably be coming out hot on this workout and just trying to hold on. The workout's gonna start to really suck for you guys in the round of eight. Um, but you just have to keep in mind that you just have six, four, two left. Um, so 12 reps left, uh, with transition times in there, the burpees, the big thing to keep in mind on this, and this goes for all divisions, pro division will likely be doing this already. Stay low. Do not stand up all the way. Stay low to the bar. These need to be fast, especially cause it's only it's short rep schemes. 
So you need to stay low to the bar. You can't pick yourself up all the way and jump over the bar. You have to kind of jump over the bar in this crouched position. So when you're warming up, make sure that you can breathe in this position. This is your head coming around your back to your hips right here, hips and legs right here. So make sure that you can breathe in this curled position because you're gonna be in it for a lot of this workout. Um, the other thing to make sure you warm up is your front rack. So this workout is practically all front rack going from the first one into the second one with the clean and jerks. Um, it is a significant uh, strain on that upper body and in this position. So we wanna be able to breathe as best as possible in this front rack position. As always, we wanna kinda try and go full grip on the bar so that you can press that bar a little bit up off of the shoulders. And honestly, if you're holding it in your arms, not the worst thing, like if you have a mobility restriction, it's not a death sentence for you in this workout. Um, it'll actually keep that bar up off of the diaphragm from collapsing that diaphragm and allow you to expand that rib cage a little bit more, allowing you to breathe a little bit better in those front squats. So big cue, full grip on the bar, a little bit of a press up off of that collarbone so that that weight isn't completely sitting on that collarbone or that uh, shelf and collapsing that diaphragm, forcing, making it harder to breathe. You'll be able to breathe through those a little bit more. Um, warm up your squat speed and your elasticity. So the ability to bounce out of that squat fast and get out of that squat quickly. Um, this is a super fast workout, so just be prepared to be dying. Your quads are gonna be lit up as well. Um, Sorry, that was a crazy tangent that I'm, go back to the pacing strategy. So if you're good quad endurance, send it. Go fast, that round of eight's gonna suck. Six, four, two, just pick up the bar when you get done. You're just trying to hold on basically for the six, four, and two at that point in time. Um, if you are not super great with your quad endurance, you're gonna take that round of 12 a little bit slower you could even break the first front squats up as long as you're back on the bar quickly into six, six. So do your six reps, drop it, pick it back up six more reps quickly though, and just make sure that your burpees are fast. So where this workout is really lost is in the burpees and if those slow down. So you need to be diligent about dropping to the ground as soon as you're done. And then when you're on the other side, pick the bar back up. So when you're warming up, practice your final rep. Your feet land in a specific position. Your hands go on the bar, and then you're just picking it up and hitting that squat clean. This workout is all about getting into a rhythm and just flowing through that rhythm. If you can stay in a rhythm, you're going to be fine on this workout. Um, for elite athletes, it's going to be trying to work ahead of that lactate accumulation and then just hold on to that lactate accumulation. For other athletes who don't have super great squat endurance. It's going to be about slowing that lactate accumulation down and then trying to push towards the middle of that workout. Um, after the workout's done, uh, if you need to squat clean a bar, um, change your shoes. Obviously, each division's bars are different. Um, if you're going to need to squat clean a bar, probably want to change your shoes. Um, if you have something like Innovates, you might be able to do this workout whole, like fully in those. They're Innovate trainers. Um, or some sort of hybrid shoe might be able to do this workout in those in its entirety. Um, but yeah, change your shoes if you need to. I didn't, they had a girl on the live stream doing it. I didn't see anything in the rule book. So maybe double check that because I don't think CrossFit allows you to do it, but they might allow you to do it. So double check on that. Uh, and then um, this next one is honestly, at the top level, it's going to be all about your pit crew and how quickly they can change your bars for you. These loads um, are, are not super heavy for elite level athletes. And it's really just gonna be about your pit crew's ability to be fast on those weight changes. Um, dead stop weights, um, I would even suggest like at the top level for the uh, first bar, opening up with like three to four touch and go reps and then starting to get into your, ripping your singles on just the first bar. I don't think you need to do it on the other bars. Um, that'll give you just that like one to two second lead uh, relative to the rest of the field. Um, 
the other bars, you're going to get a little bit of a break on. So it's just ripping singles after that. The other thing to keep in mind is that during this one, you're um, going to actually start recovering more. Your first barbell is probably going to feel like absolute dog shit. Uh, maybe only for your first like four or five reps, but it's not going to feel great. As this bar goes on, you're going to start to feel recovered a little bit more. And during the eights and the sixes, you might actually feel really like start to feel really good during those. Um, so even if that first bar feels like shit, no, you're going to get recovered. Your, your body's aerobic system is still working. It's still clearing lactate from that workout. So you'll start to feel better. You can take practice reps, um, before you start. Um, so keep that in mind. And this is the, these clean jerks are the other reason we want that rack position really, really warmed up for, um, warmed up, uh, because this whole workout involves that front rack. So good, good warm up, stretch lats, get the triceps loose, activate that posterior shoulder so you can get good external rotation. Um, so that you're pressing off of a shelf right as that bar hits there. Remember, we don't want to be scrunched up here because that you have to travel a further distance. We want to be open. So getting those shoulders as open as possible so that when you come around on those cleans, you can go right up overhead. Um, those are the little details that are going to make a huge difference on your fatigue um, and your ability to move the bar quicker, which is an important part of this workout is moving that bar fast. Um, for the most part, this is just a barbell battery. Um, really, the only way to get better at this is through training. There's not a lot of um, tips and techniques outside of just making sure that your positions are really, really solid. Um, make sure that posterior chain is warmed up so that you can uh, pull that bar really well through that uh, middle of the rep. Um, but yeah, like those are kind of the big things, um, pit crew, make sure they're on point. They know exactly what the fuck they're doing. They know how to get the weights off, off, or sorry, the weights on quickly or the weights off quickly, figure out the most, um, efficient way for whatever it is weight wise that your gym has to change those weights. Um, you hopefully can just go, um, it looks like you might just be able to slide tens on the whole time for this one. Um, for guys, uh, it looks like 10s, 10s, 15s, 10s again. So sliding those on, obviously with the base of, of 45s and 25s. Ladies, it looks like 10s, 5s, 15s, nope, 10s again, and then 5s. So 10, 5, 10, 5, I think I said that right. 10, 5, 10, 5, yeah. So, I, and like, just be okay with lifting with those fives on the inside of, this, of those tens. So, um, we have pit crew on point, open up your front rack, um, just find your rhythm, find a rhythm on this workout. Um, and then uh, the, the last thing, if you're finishing pretty quickly on this workout, maybe put like a C2 bike around close, put on damper one and just spin while you kind of wait until that 10 minute mark. It'll help flush some of that lactate a little bit better. Um, I'd probably stop at least two minutes, like at the eight minute mark. So if you're, you know, if you're an elite level athlete, you'll probably be dying for two, on the bike for three, resting for another two, hit a hit a warm up rep if you need to. But you know, you got, fuck, what is that? Twenty eight warm up reps ahead of ahead of that heavy rep. So, um, sorry this took so long. Uh, as always, like reach out if you guys have questions. Um, we'll, we might be updating kind of what we're seeing data wise on our scores. So reach out. Um, but good luck this week, guys. Uh, remember the leaderboard will shake up a lot at the end of this week. So catch you guys next time.